Well, welcome everyone. Uh, this is Daniel Smith from DXC Red Rock. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us uh, from today. It's just gone 11.30, so we're still getting a lot of people attending or joining the, this session. So we'll kick off formally in about a minute and a half. I'm just gonna play a short video for those people that are joining us. Thank you, Andrew. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, good morning and, and good afternoon, again, depending on where you're joining us from today. Uh, thank you for joining, registering for our Engage, Predict and Improve Your Workforce Capabilities webinar. Uh, my name is Daniel Smith from DXC Red Rock. Extremely excited to be facilitating the session today. Um, we do have a jam-packed um, session with a lot of new and exciting content um, co-presented across our strategic partners, Oracle, uh, Ascender, and of course, WFS. So joining me today from Oracle is John Hansen, Vice President for the Oracle HCM Cloud Product Development, uh, Ned Al-Balawi, uh, Solution Director for the HCM Cloud Product from DXE Red Rock, uh, Andrew Tate, a Solution Principal for HCM Cloud, Maureen Keane, uh, Director of Workforce Management Advisory and Transformation from Workforce Software, WFS, and Sandy Forrest, General Manager of Public and Enterprise Services from Ascender HCM. So we're really excited about the content that we've um, prepared for you today. Um, we do appreciate your time. Um, this is in the context of the regular webinars that we run, it is a longer session. We do have uh, half an hour dedicated to Q&A at the back end of the session. We do anticipate um, finishing the content by 12.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, next slide, please, Andrew. Just by way of introductions, for those of you who uh, aren't aware of uh, our organisation, so DXC Red Rock, the largest Oracle partner uh, servicing the Australia and New Zealand region, circa 650 Oracle professionals um, who every day get up, uh, eat, breathe, sleep, uh, implementing Oracle solutions, which is a big component of what we're looking at today. Uh, offices in every major city uh, and a platinum partner as it relates to delivering Oracle services and providing managed services for our partners and customers that are on the phone today. Just by way of appreciation, we've got over 60 customers who have joined the session today um, from a broad range of industries, locations, as well as uh, footprints in terms of Oracle uh, ERP solutions through to non-Oracle customers. So it's a great cross-section of the community we're talking to through this webinar. In terms of the uh, content and what we wanted to kick off today, I suppose from a HCM credentials perspective, uh, Red Rock has had over 20 years um, experience implementing HRMS, Oracle-centric HRMS solutions across Australia and New Zealand. And this particular uh, solution and, and, and offering that we're showcasing today is, is underpinned um, circa 300% growth in our practice over the course of the last um, 12 months. So it's, it's certainly a trending 
uh, solution and trending product. Um, we've got significant growth off the back of some large scale and small scale implementations that we're currently delivering. We acknowledge and appreciate that there's a, a range of JD Edwards, EBS and PeopleSoft customers on the call today and, and we'll certainly talking to you about um, how the solution fits into that uh, roadmap and context um, and a little bit more information about uh, us as an organisation. But we do have a jam-packed schedule, as I mentioned. So we're going to crack into um, the content. So the first thing we're going to do, and um, just given the duration of the session and trying to get a little bit of agile interactive feedback as we go along, we've got uh, three polls we'd like to do throughout the course of the session. The first of which is really aligned to the gender, just to get a little bit of a read as to uh, what content people are most interested in um, seeing today uh, and what they're most excited about. So. If you can all um, uh, please review the question, it's really around what content are you wanting to see or learn about the most today across the, um, the agenda items, that'll be appreciated. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll certainly tailor uh, the session according to that feedback. Okay, so the poll results are in. So in terms of what people are most interested in today, it is around workforce management, uh, certainly a clear leader. Uh, and then second is around the modern talent management or the talent management component. So that certainly helps. Thank you everyone uh, in terms of how we're gonna focus the session today. So I'm now gonna hand over to Ned Albawali, who's gonna take us through how the solution and offering hangs together uh, and set the scene for um, how and what uh, the, the solution offering is from a DXC Red Rock and Partners perspective. Uh, thank you, Ned. Thank you, Dan, and hello, everyone. It's, it's very exciting times for us because now we can claim that we have a complete offering when it comes to human capital management, payroll management, and workforce management solution. With you in the center of this trio, um, with your employees being in the center of this trio, now we can take your employees through the whole journey from the day they hit the apply button in your recruitment website, all the way to onboarding, getting the information into multiple places to facilitate the onboarding activities, their payments to run their first payroll, to capture their time to understand where they are through the talent management and all the processes that comes within having an employee within, uh, within the organization. What's exciting about our partnerships with Oracle, Ascender, and WFS is with the employee-centric view, you don't need to browse multiple systems. It's from within Oracle, HCM Cloud, you can access everything you need as an employee. With Ascender seamlessly integrating with Oracle HCM Cloud and WFS actually embedded within uh, Oracle HCM Cloud, you don't have to go anywhere outside the self-service functionality, if you want to call it this way. We've been working with Ascender on multiple implementations. We've been working with WFS. WFS is a global partner for Oracle. And as I said, they build their solution to be embedded within Oracle HCM Cloud. And with this, we can have the full journey of your employees and your organization map into a single platform without the hassle of worrying about how we integrate and how we, we pass the data through multiple systems. Talking about the journey, if we click through to the next slide, what we've been doing in the last few years is rather than coming to you and say, hey, this is fantastic, this is everything you need and this is everything you want to implement. Actually, what we do is we come and have a chat with you and discuss where you are today. What are your priorities? Where do you want to be? This is something called capability maturity model integrity. And this is a model that's being used by multiple organizations around the world to assess your current priorities and how you do things today and how you can go from level one to level two, how you can go from level two to level four. And what we do is we come along, we understand your journey, we understand your priorities, and we do our initial assessment, and then we tailor a solution that is based on that. So if we jump to the next slide, based on this customer journey mapping, this is the complete and full footprint today. Uh, from the trail, 
within our partnerships and based on the customer journey mapping and assessment that we uh, implement with yourselves, then what we do is we map these components to yourself. This is everything absolutely you can have, but generally we don't recommend to go with a big bang and, and implement everything, but we would like to take it slowly based on your priorities. Generally speaking, there are certain pathways. So if personnel management is, is what you need, then let's go with personnel management and pretty much payroll comes with that from an operation transactional point of view. And hey, yes, if you have time machines and you have uh, uh, certain uh, time capturing requirements, so let's do the operational transactional phase at first. If we're happy with that, then we move to the next stage. What do you want to do? Do you want to do onboarding, recruiting? Do you want to do full talent management now? Do you want to go to the next level and talk about strategic workforce planning? Where you get your absence management? Is it is it with your payroll system? Is it with Oracle HCM Cloud? Is it with your workforce management and time capture? These are the things we mapped out for you. It's not one size fits all. Uh, based on the partnerships we have and based on the comprehensive footprint of the offer, we customize the journey and we give you the best advice on which pathway you want to take from that. Without further ado, uh, the first component of today's webinar is with John Hansen, our Vice President of Product Development for the HM Cloud with exciting news and, and innovations. So off to you, Hansen, John. Thank you very much, Ned, and thank you also, Daniel. Welcome, everyone. Um, let me also add my welcome for all the participants, and it's great to be on this call with our partners, um, DXE Red Rock, Workforce Software, and Ascender. So today, I'm just going to kick the proceedings off from a product perspective, just to set a baseline for everyone on the call to um, help us all understand, first of all, what the Oracle HCM Cloud solution is today, but also to give you some insight into the underlying design strategy and philosophy that is driving uh, many of our most recent innovations. And then finally, um, I, I'd like to talk a little bit too about our customers and, um, and how we engage with our customer group. So I will talk about a mix of both current products and also some of our newer products that we are releasing over the um, coming months and years. So I'll point that out, but please, if you're interested in any of the solutions I'm talking about today, uh, just run that query by your local uh, DXC Red Rock representative uh, or your local Oracle representative to understand uh, at, at what point of the release cycle the solution is at. So today, uh, really four things. First of all, let's just set that baseline understanding of what the Oracle HCM Cloud consists of today. And then secondly, um, as I mentioned, I'll talk a little bit about there's three strategic drivers that are shaping the product today. And I wanted to let you know what those are. And, and, and then we can show how those drivers are impacting this cycle of constant innovation that, um, that Oracle HCM is experiencing. And then finally, back to the focus on our customers, uh, the most important part of any of these conversations. Okay, so um, HCM Cloud today for uh, our customers on the call today that are uh, currently running some of our older generations of solutions like the Business Suite, PeopleSoft, JD Edwards, you'll see many familiar components here in the HCM solution itself. We have a, uh, a large set of capabilities in the area we call global human resources. And there you'll see uh, many of the traditional components you would expect, the core HR, the person management area, onboarding, uh, benefits, compensation management. Uh, you'll also see payroll or our payroll interface. Now, Oracle doesn't um, doesn't take to market a, a localized cloud payroll in in a number of countries. Australia and New Zealand um, are two of those. So, in that case, we use our global payroll interface, 
and and that's where our partners such as Ascender um, enter the pit, enter the picture to provide uh, that payroll capability and have that seamlessly integrated to our HCM cloud solution. Now, similarly, when we look at the next category of components in the solution, the workforce management area, we can manage uh, many requirements for customers, but there's, there's clearly often a need for um, significantly more sophisticated and capable um, uh, solutions around workforce management. And, and today, that's why we have our friends from Workforce Software on the call as well. Um, to help you understand if you do have uh, more complex um, requirements, we have these um, tightly integrated partners available to um, connect with and give you all of the capability you need. Thirdly, we have this full suite of talent management capabilities. And um, this is often the entry point for customers that are using uh, eBusiness Suite, PeopleSoft or JD Edwards. Um, this is often the entry point into uh, usage of cloud HCM solutions because you can adopt this talent management suite here and run that in concert with your eBusiness or PeopleSoft solution today. So we have a specific coexistence bundle that includes these talent management capabilities as well as compensation management. And a number of our uh, customers have use that entry point to be able to start taking advantage of um, cloud capabilities and specifically to get some of the um, most recent and sort of contemporary thinking around talent management. Now, finally, there's a new class of capabilities that are being added into our solution. And these are capabilities that have artificial intelligence and most specifically, um, some of the cognitive computing capabilities of artificial intelligence, like machine learning, uh, added into our solution. So I'm going to show you some examples of um, how we're starting to add artificial intelligence capabilities into our solution today. But you'll see this is a very rich set of capabilities across a very broad um, cloud offering. So there are many ways, as Ned mentioned, many ways for you to prioritize and um, get, get immediate and best value out of starting to adopt uh, some of the newer cloud capabilities. Okay, so that's largely the, the HCM cloud solutions we're going to be talking about today. Now, I mentioned there's three drivers that are really driving um, our design philosophy and where we're spending a lot of focus and time currently. And they're really about, I guess, this, this concept of evolving and rapidly changing employee expectations. The expectation of what sort of experience employees will have at our organizations, what that employment relationship will look like, and, and then lastly, for the HR professionals themselves, what experience they have as they interact with the organization, how they interact with the tools and, and software that they're provided with. Now in the employee experience area, um, clearly the, the standout driver at the moment is really about how do we redefine this idea of the human machine relationship with so much of the discussion about artificial intelligence and how that's going to impact um, both uh, for better and for worse sometimes, our existing organizational structures and the way our people do their work on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's really a large part of our thinking around the employee experience. From an employment relationship perspective, um, we know that in fact, uh, we really need to work so much harder from an organizational perspective to take best advantage of all of the diverse skills and capabilities our workforce brings to the table. And then also from a workforce perspective, we want to enhance and enrich and give great opportunity for every one of our workers. So to do that, we need to have a renewed focus on each of our workers' careers and giving them opportunities to um, really enhance those careers. So we've been working on a suite of career mobility capabilities that I'm going to show you today 
that um, is really meant to address this focus on the employment relationship. And then finally, the HR professional experience as well. How do we make it easier for HR practitioners to use these tool sets, as you'll see today, to, to actually drive productivity, to, to drive innovation and drive efficiencies inside our organization? So um, the HR professional experience is not forgotten in all of this, and we're going to touch on some of those capabilities today also. Okay, so let's um, just talk about what this employee experience um, means and, and where it manifests itself inside our solution. Well, we actually have um, artificial intelligence augmented capabilities across many, many aspects of the entire HCM suite. In talent acquisition, we're using AI to find better candidates and to um, create more intelligent processes for finding the talent we need. We're using artificial intelligence to manage some of our talent management capabilities, to make smarter choices about how we can develop our workforce. We're using it across the skills inventory area to um, better utilize skills across the entire competency framework inside our organization. We've introduced um, brand new capabilities such as advanced controls which is really a risk and compliance capability that, um, that allows us to look for any risk issues or any compliance issues inside our organization and to act on those before they actually occur. Um, we can clearly apply artificial intelligence to learning and we can do that in the area of recommendations and suggestions and ensuring that we're providing our workforce with um, the, the most valuable learning opportunities possible. Oracle also embeds artificial intelligence into the user experience itself. And that allows us to provide a personalized user experience inside the HR solution itself by suggesting actions, by surfacing the most relevant information to each specific user. And, um, and, and lastly, we now have an always available digital assistant. And, and you're going to see and hear us talk about that digital assistant throughout today. Okay, so enough talking. Let's, uh, let's have a look at how this looks and how it works inside the application itself. So here's our HCM Cloud solution. This is uh, the front page that a user uh, would see. And in this case, they're looking at functions that are related to their team. So in this case, this person is a people leader or a manager. So if we look at the hiring box here, we can start seeing how um, artificial intelligence can be applied to the hiring or the sourcing process. So here we have a requisition for a marketing specialist. If we go into that requisition, at this point, at the top of the screen, you're seeing lots of the um, traditional information that you would expect to see surfaced about an open requisition. Uh, number of active applicants we have, at what stage of the hiring process that might be, um, some, some specific information about the requisition itself. But what you're seeing where the arrow is there at the bottom of the screen, recommended candidates, this is artificial intelligence, Moving into the LinkedIn database, and Oracle has a unique partnership with LinkedIn to allow us to do this. And it is searching for candidates inside LinkedIn, and these are passive candidates. They aren't candidates that are actively looking for roles or actively looking at this particular requisition. The artificial intelligence process is looking for the best matches inside our organization in the LinkedIn database. And that's largely based on organizational and workforce behavior in the past. So it's using a lot of intelligence to understand what makes the best candidates, what sort of candidates are the most successful in this particular role, and where can I find candidates inside the LinkedIn database in this case that match that profile. So that's a brand new addition to how we can source the best candidates and bring them into our organization and, and start using 
sources of candidates, candidate pools that at this moment are passive candidates. Um, and that's really an untapped, untapped talent source that we want to start taking advantage of. Now, here's a second way that we're using artificial intelligence to enhance the, uh, the, the, the employee experience. This way is through some of the smart um, user experience capabilities I mentioned. So once again, on the front screen, you're seeing here suggestions. So this is our artificial intelligence engine suggesting uh, particular business activities based on a whole range of, of sources of information. So in this case, we have learning recommendations, we have compensation recommendations, we have um, an opportunity marketplace uh, set of recommendations. So, so how do we see these? Well, when we click on this pointer, why am I seeing these? So for learning recommendations, you're going to see AI-based recommendations based on the career interests that you've logged inside your profile. For team compensation, you're going to see information that is being used by your manager peer group in this case. And it's going to be filtered and sorted in a way that helps you make more informed decisions. Uh, for opportunity marketplace, uh, which is a new capability I'll, I'll discuss today, it's really going to start recommending additional activities within the organization, additional gigs, if you like. And that's, once again, is going to be based on interests and skills that you've listed inside your personal profile. So let's have a look at that. So here we have the recommended learning. Now, once again, you're going to see uh, common traditional capabilities reflected here. So you'll have your required training. Uh, that might be mandatory training that we're all required to do. You'll, you'll be able to track your in-progress training. You'll also be able to see um, recommended training based on your current role. So that's artificial intelligence doing that recommendation. And you're also going to see recommendations for training based on careers of interest. And this is going to be, once again, information that you've added into your personal profile about where you would like to take your career. And this is the AI engine now starting to surface up recommendations based on that career direction. So in this case, if you're wanting to progress from your current role to a senior management role, we know that um, there are some capabilities and competencies required for that around building relationships and communication. And this learning activity addresses those particular competencies and capabilities. So it's going to start filtering and start surfacing up a very targeted information for a learner based on a range of personal profile information that they've provided. So th this is the way really AI is reframing the employee experience. And, and we're doing lots of work across the entire suite to um, use AI in this sort of fashion. Okay. So let's, we talked about employee experience, let's talk about the employment relationship and specifically around uh, what we're doing in this career mobility area. So career mobility, uh, we think is um, a critical component of um, that activity that we have with our employees, but it's not the only area uh, that we need to address in the employment relationship. There's areas across workforce planning and modeling, how we uh, provide social learning and how we interact and collaborate with the rest of the workforce, how we manage our candidate relationships um, as we're sourcing talent into the organization, as well as career mobility. So you see this idea of the employment relationship is quite far reaching across um, many business functions inside um, your organization. But we're focusing specifically on career mobility because we know this is such a big deal. We know that um, by providing some really sophisticated and useful and meaningful career mobility capabilities, we have a better chance of keeping our top talent inside our organization. And we have a better chance of utilizing everyone's unique skills and capabilities um, to, to, to best effect inside our organization.
So once again, let's explore what that looks like. So we've um, created a career mobility capability and, and, and we're starting to release the components of that. And one of those components is what we're calling an opportunity marketplace. So this is a place where you can look for opportunities to expand your career, um, opportunities for you to use your unique skills and capabilities, and also to match those capabilities with activities that are going on inside your organization. So what it looks like here, you're seeing um, opportunities, and opportunities take two forms. Um, opportunities can be jobs, and that's a more traditional way that you might apply for a vacant position, and that would require an assignment change, and that would be your primary role inside the organization. But there's also this concept of gigs, which are shorter term, non-assignment based activities, which really represent small activities or small activities that are going across outside your organizational boundary, but for which you may have skills and capabilities that could be applied to that gig. So let's look at how this um, manifests itself. So here's a gig. Uh, in this case, it's a graphic designer for a new wellness program. So you'll see some information here about the gig itself. And you might notice the gig is only 10 hours a week. And um, it starts at a certain date. And in this case, it goes for one month. You'll see who's in that team. and the reason this is being provided in your front screen is because you've shown an interest in graphic design. So this is a graphic design gig that is now available for you to apply for and for you to start doing some work in one of your interest areas that may be outside your regular day-to-day -day job. So applying for this gig is very simple. The first thing it's going to ask is, look, is your profile up to date? Because the profile will be looked at by the people looking for their gig workers. So it gives you a chance to quickly update your profile. And now you're seeing the second of the components of this career mobility area. Uh, and that's a new way of looking at personal profiles. If you think about the way everyone's HR record looks today, this is going to look dramatically different. It's a a much more intuitive, it's a much more meaningful, and it's a much more enjoyable way of actually exploring someone's profile and being able to record information about each worker in your organization. So that's the profile. If that's up to date, then we can go ahead and apply for that gig, send that off. And right now, back in our home screen, we have that gig loaded into our opportunity area. So that's really as easy as um, gig working can be inside your organization. So it's very easy to show what am I interested in? What are my other skills and competencies that I'm not using today? Where would I like to expand my career? And this is really giving you then the opportunity to see what opportunities might be out there for you. Now, how easy is it to create a gig? Um, very easy. So let's go up here. You'll see you get two options. I want to create a gig or a job. Now, if you say job, that will take you to a regular job requisition process. But if you say gig, this sort of lightweight activity, we get a chance to add some simple information about a gig. Now, I've, I've created a gig here um, to get some help with this presentation I'm doing today. So I want to develop some graphics for the um, DXC Red Rock webinar. Um, I, I think it might take five hours per week. I need someone that's a good graphic designer to help me out with some of my data. And this gig is, is only going for a couple of weeks. So, uh, and it can be done remotely as well. So that's really the, the gig information at the um, highest level. I can also add then some more content about classifying what sort of um, uh, capabilities do I require for this gig? And you'll see it's graphic design, or knowledge of HCM and artificial intelligence, and then I can publish that gig. All right, so here we have the unassigned gig now, develop some graphics for this DXC Red Rock webinar. So it's very simple inside this marketplace to both expand your career by 
um, looking for other activities you can carry out inside the organization and for you to find and to unlock capabilities inside your workforce that it hasn't been easy to um, see in the past. Now, you saw um, uh, searching particular employees and you see some of this new capability we're adding into the career mobility area. The third is this connections functionality that allows us to look around the organization. And what we're really trying to do here is locate people of interest, understand the organization in a broader sense, um, find communities and connect with colleagues as well. So this capability allows us to look for our co-workers, uh, allows to review their profiles. You've seen that profile view before. Um, and it allows us to explore then their organization as well. So in this case, we're going to look at the org chart function. And you'll see that this is really a much more sophisticated and intuitive org chart than we've had in previous versions of our solutions. We can look at uh, the employee's manager. We can look at that person's org chart. We can look for the peer group for uh, particular people. And we can start seeing that information presented to us in, um, in, in a much more sophisticated and useful fashion, whether it's by geography or location. And, and then we can start exploring more of the organization from there. So that employment relationship, you can see how new capabilities that we're developing are going to allow us to deepen that relationship we have with every employee in our organization. And you can see the sort of value that could be delivered from that. Okay, so we've talked about the employee experience, we've talked about employment relationship. Let's finish with the professional experience itself. Now, the professional experience, we know this is really driving uh, this idea of the service delivery economy or the experience economy. And we know that it's a critical efficiency area inside every organization. So what areas does this manifest itself in? Well, if you have a, a help desk type capability and knowledge base, that's where this service delivery area would reside. Um, the career sites for um, all of your candidates, um, guided learning, the digital assistant that we've discussed, and also um, creating a smarter way to interact with the solution. And we do that using artificial intelligence. And at the moment, we're using that with AI-enabled recommendations. But let's touch on the digital assistant. Now, if you've heard the term chatbot, a digital assistant is really like a superset of chatbots. A chatbot is really designed to interact on a single topic. Our Oracle HCM Cloud digital assistant has all of those chatbots rolled into one single interface. And you would have been noticing this perhaps at the bottom of each of these screens. You see the, the single digital assistant icon at the bottom right hand corner. And when you invoke that icon, you start getting a number of capabilities that are available to you. So if, um, if you're a, a, a regular worker or if you're a manager, you're going to get a tailored set of capabilities and and transactions and information sources made available. So for instance, if you're a manager, you could um, select approvals here and you'll immediately get information about what approvals are pending for you to act on. And you can engage with that transaction and you can do those approvals completely inside the digital assistant itself. You might want to look at, uh, say, the directory and find information about your part of the organization. So you'll see here the digital assistant is saying, well, would you like me to show you all of your peers? Would you like me to show you, uh, show, show you the direct reports that you have? Who your HR representative is? Um, you know, who's in your organization? So it's really starting to prompt and more intelligent, intelligently interact with you with uh, the task you're trying to carry out. And once again, you can initiate all of these transactions from directly inside the digital assistant. One last um, uh, class of skills here, the manager actions area. Um, you can also carry out all of the general manager actions that you would maybe do via a menu on screen today. That can also be initiated outside the digital assistant. So you see this is a very powerful capability 
that we make available. And it's really about efficiency. It's about being able to deliver super efficient service. And it really has, um, it has an impact in a positive fashion across all of the HR functions that you'd be familiar with today. Okay, so we've, we've talked about all of those different expectations. I've shown you some of the constant innovation we've been doing. Now, I just wanna finish by highlighting two ways we're engaging with customers. The first way, and, and, I, and you know, we're all dealing with this, um, this very disrupted work environment that uh, we find ourselves in today. One way we've been thinking about how we can help our customers is to help them identify ways of using that entire suite of solutions to help with this idea of moving from work from home to back to work. And, and we think there's some particular applications of components of the solution that are going to be very useful for organizations as they're transitioning from the lockdown, the work from home environment we've found ourselves in to whatever our new normal working environment is. So um, that's our, our um, employee care package and we can provide some more information on that. And then lastly, I just wanted to highlight that all of these new innovations you've been seeing today are largely coming from our customer and partner community. So we have a massive um, HCM community on our Cloud Customer Connect environment, 45,000 HCM users providing information about great new ideas and what priority we should apply to those. And about 80% of each of the, about the last two years of releases, about 80% of new capability that's provided in those releases has come directly from feedback from our customers. So I just want to encourage uh, all of you to continue to provide your ideas. We're listening and uh, you're really going to see a lot of those ideas manifest themselves in the solution. Okay, so with that, I'm going to finish and, uh, and, and pass back to um, our moderator and I'll look forward to any questions uh, later in the session. Okay, so we're going to trigger our second poll, we're just changing tack here. Um, and this poll is really around the HR service requests and how do you, what's the highest category of those that you get in your organisations today, today from a day-to-day -day management perspective. So we're just going to initiate that poll and this will help drive the content for the next section. Really target those um, HR users. All right, so battling for the winner here. Um, <clears throat> so as the top two ones are payroll requests and change of employee details, Ned. So hopefully that gives you the, some context for the next section, please. Fantastic, thank you, Dan. So just a follow up from um, John's uh, presentation. What we wanna talk about now is just a couple of snippets about the modern talent management and HR help desk and digital assistants. Um, Andrew will take you through some of the HR help desk and digital assistance help, but definitely with payroll requests, award disputes, overall general questions, these are things can be automated and the time uh, of interaction can be reduced to, to automate those. But um, on a very high level, I just want to share a couple of slides with you for the modern talent management. If you go to the next slide. Um, again, the overall solution is mobile uh, friendly. You can use it on any uh, platform, any device, and it adjusts itself. So this can be used anywhere um, in any working condition. You're working from home, you're working from the office, uh, you want to download something offline and do it over there from a talent management point of view. Nevertheless, if, if we click to the next one, please, what I want to say is from a talent management point of view, th there are a few concepts and principles generally we, we try to cover. Trying to talk about performance, try to talk about goal management, succession management, risk management, talent reviews, career development. So all of these are subjects and, and uh, discussion points that you have with employees at any point in time. Nevertheless, 
I'm pretty sure if we have HR generalists here, they would understand the nine box model, which is performance versus potential. But that's, that's not just performance versus potential. Actually, in this single view, and I, I, I insisted on having this slide here because this single view is very powerful. You can review your staff potential. You can view the risk. You can view your flight risks from here. What you can do as well, you can drag people from one box to another box from a career development point of view. You can, if there are any high potential top talent there in the top right corner, you can flag risk assessment. You can flag succession management. To the right hand panel, you can create talent pools and you can drag people into talent pools. So what I'm saying here with Oracle Hexane Cloud Talent Management, pretty much you can handle all your talent management requirements in this single view. The data comes from employee self-service, from manager self-service, from the HR professional interface, but all the data collection and the artificial intelligence and the adaptive intelligence tool that John was um, referring to will feed into this view and you can take numerous number of actions from a for a talent management perspective. And this view is, is really very strong and encompasses majority of your requirements from a talent management perspective. Uh, on this note, I will just hand over to Andrew to take us some of the HR help desk and chatbot uh, capabilities that could uh, answer some of your questions about the HR so, uh, service requests here. Up to you, Andrew. Great, thanks, Ned. Um, so yeah, I, I've been asked today just to uh, go over the HR help desk capability um, and demonstrate um, some of the use cases that an organization would use it for. So uh, typically the HR help desk is used to build really a consistent message to your uh, organization and your employees. And really what you, the goal, of, the overall goal here is to reduce the amount of cases that come into your uh, organization that you have to respond to and also um, build alignment between your messaging. So it's not you're not sending out uh, really unaligned messages to your workforce. Um, you're creating consistent messaging and be able to uh, respond in a similar fashion uh, as, as you would to every employee. Um, and that's really some of the advantages that the HR help desk gives you. Um, and then you sort of reduce your overall time spent on each of these cases. So what I'm gonna do is just step through a, a simple use case of how HR help desk could be used in the organization. So what I'm going to do is uh, open up our DXC Red Rock instance here, and I've enabled HR Help Desk within my instance. So it's just an icon within my uh, Springboard or newsfeed here. Um, when I click that HR Help Desk as a HR um, administrator um, or a service manager line or channel manager, essentially it gives me a list of all the uh, service requests that have come into my uh, channel or uh, queue. So here in particular, um, I could see that there's an issue that's focused on uh, direct deposit. But the good thing is this is kind of like, this gives me a good dashboard view of all the issues within my organization. I can report on this to understand the common issues that ha happen within my organization. Essentially, th these could drive future KPIs and um, that be, uh, for example, I wanna reduce the amount of uh, inquiries that I get about payroll and then I can um, put initiatives in place within my HR help desk to respond to payroll requests more efficiently. So if I open up this particular service request, you can see here um, it captures some basic information of the uh, person who reported the incident and get, uh, auto assigns some severity based upon the issue that's reported um, and assigns it to a queue, uh, a queue in particular. So in this example, Lisa is asking, how do I sign up for my direct deposit? So I want to respond to her in a, a uniform fashion as I do to all my uh, direct deposit requests. So on the left here, I can click the, uh, to respond back. Um, and I know there is some uh, smart text that I could actually insert to respond. So I actually have a preconceived um, response here around how I want to respond to this. So I can click this uh, smart text button and then it would open and I would click the direct deposit and then it would open uh, the text prompt and then I can tailor this response uh, in particular to Lisa for this request. But this gives you an idea that 
you know, it's taken elements like uh, Lisa's name, uh, the service request number, and I can embed actually other auto-generating um, fields or uh, attributes into this response. So there you go, it now has inserted that into the response. I also want to um, attach documentation um, on Lisa's particular region to update her direct deposit request. So I can actually insert knowledge that is associated with this type of request. So here we go. So it's given me direct deposit FAQs and I can insert that into the text of my response. So you can see here it's now attached that uh, document or uh, image into my response that gives me that standard workflow into uh, responding to a request such as direct deposit. So you can see how this would be quite useful within a HR organization and utilizing it to build that consistent message and workflow, as well as uh, understanding the types of service requests that are coming to your organization and how you can effectively respond to these requests. So Andrew, we had a question whilst you're going through there. So thank you, Kate. Um, so where is the knowledge stored? Yeah, so the knowledge is stored as a knowledge management uh, area within um, HR Help Desk. So embedded in that, um, you can upload all your documents and associate them to the types of requests that you uh, that you would be responding to your uh, organization with. So underpinning this HR help desk fun functionality, it, it's actually a, a customer experience product. It's come from the CX realm, but it's been repurposed for HR help desk because like customers, employees are your customers. And this is where you want to build up um, your knowledge, your uh, your responses to your customers in a similar similar like fashion for employees. And then just to follow up from that, Andrew, uh, there is the, the knowledge base articles you can write is uh, you can put on top of it the chatbots and you can put on top of it the machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence, where once you start typing and logging. Um, a request, then it starts reading and understanding. Maybe I could suggest these knowledge base articles first before that person look the request. So it's um, it's built based on these uh, technologies behind the tool. So there's a couple other questions that have been tabled. I'll interject them at the appropriate time, um, and in particular Nick's question there. So um, moving along, we're running a little bit behind time, guys. Yeah, sure thing. Okay, so. I'm just going to elaborate a bit on what John talked about the uh, digital assistants. So just go into a bit more detail behind the scenes on how you would typically provision a digital assistant into the organization and what's available out of the box for HCM in particular. So the digital assistants come with um, over 35 different uh, transactions currently for human capital management specifically, um, and each sit within uh, each of their respective modules. So you can see here, for example, uh, Global HR, as an employee, you can view your um, individual information through it. You could ask it questions around uh, reporting structures or hierarchies. Um, as a manager, um, you're really utilizing those self-service transactions around promotions or approving transactions within your organization. So they're quite powerful and um, these are immediately available um, when the digital assistant is enabled within your organization. So uh, great stuff here. So another question, um, Andrew, and we might uh, need to defer this one to the back end, but is the chatbot chat bot part of the help desk or a separate feature? And I think you may have clarified that in the context of what you just covered off, and that's also from Yeah, the so the chat the chat box is in particular the digital assistant is a feature uh, separate from HR help desk. This is available as a as a separate offering um, that can be enabled with the HCM instance. Um, and the, they take care of all these module areas at the moment. Um, Oracle do have roadmap to enable it with Help Desk. Okay, keep moving, in, please. Great. So, uh, look at the different models of delivery for the chatbot. So you have this out of the box capability for HCM. So I can um, e enable my digital assistant within HCM. And that gives me all the 35 plus skills available there. And I can do some uh, light tuning or configure the skills in a way that uh, I want to build some consistency to my organization. Um, extending beyond that, you could 
ignore the HCM out of the box capability and use Oracle's past capability to build your own skills and utterances to uh, your organization. Um, but you're taking on full responsibility of building out those skills and, and that chatbot, but it is tightly integrated with your SaaS, SaaS solution out of the box. Lastly, you can do a hybrid option. Um, so this is where us as a partner could come in and take upon uh, the implementation with you with the pass, but you can also include the HCM skills in this package, those 35 plus skills that are currently there. Um, that enables you to take on more skills as they come in from that HCM package, but as well build up your own skills. And this is important because essentially you can connect with other third party applications like Ascender or Workforce Suite uh, to uh, utilizing APIs to uh, essentially interact with those systems. Um, you're not just limited to that, you can actually do your own third party applications as well if they're sitting with API technology or something similar. Uh, but really, the, there are varied models of delivery for your chatbots and digital assistants in the organization. So, just talking about some of the components or what makes up a digital assistant. So, essentially, um, firstly, we define the channels of usage. So, this is all about um, uh, essentially where the digital bot, uh, digital chatbot is is placed in the organization. So typically we would see this sitting within the Oracle uh, HCM uh, product, uh, but if you were using more PaaS solution, it, there would be other examples around you would want to embed it within your Microsoft Teams solution or Slack, for example. Next, uh, chatbots are programmed with skills. So you could have uh, skills for uh, certain areas of interest like uh, human capital. Um, it would be your candidate experience. So you would have uh, a skill area for managing your hiring activities, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you build intents. So these are specific to the skill areas. So what are the intents? What am I trying to get engagement with? Um, so this would be things like I want to view my pay slip, I want to view my absences or balance, or I want to be able to promote an employee. So this is where you build those intents up. Lastly, you then build the utterances within intents. So this is where you're building that, that conversational framework with um, the intended mind. So what are the types of phrases or wording could be used to request my pay slip? Um, with that digital assistant, you then can uh, either configure or modify the standard ones out of the box to be more specific to your organization, or you can um, then provide your own setup or examples available. So that, that's just an overview of digital assistants, and hopefully I've given you a taste of what's there um, and give you some, some further insight into how you could potentially set this up within your business. Cool, so we're just gonna move on to a next poll before we move on to uh, WFS and uh, Ascender. Um, so I'm just gonna start this next poll off. So what is the great, greatest pain point uh, facing your HR organization today? So that should be showing up on your um, screen. Okay, looks like data reporting and analytics is clearly the front runner uh, and the employee experience behind it. Okay, great. So I'm gonna hand off to uh, Sandy now and um, to present uh, some information on Ascender. Thanks, Andrew. I'd say good morning and or good afternoon to everyone on the, on the uh, webinar. I'll just that I've got control. Okay, beautiful. Thanks, Andrew. Okay, uh, from the Ascender point of view, thank you and, and uh, lovely to sort of you know, be invited, really excited to get involved with uh, the strength of the organisation like DXC, uh, the Oracle platform, Oracle HCM that we've, we've done some work with in the past as well. And terrific to be on another call with uh, the really one of the experts in the fields of workforce management, the WFS team. So I'll do my best to rattle through only a couple of slides and try and, and catch up on a bit of time. So hold on, here we go. Okay. 
I can't get the mouse working, that'd be a good start. A really quick snapshot for Ascendo. Um, so 30 years in payroll, um, you know, for me, uh, and I've been in the organisation for 11 of those, for me, that's about uh, uh, credibility uh, and reliability. So certainly not a new kid on the block, and particularly across the Asia PAC region, not only ANZ, uh, have been in the industry for a long time and, and, and hopefully well understood and well known across that industry. Uh, a lot of local, uh, across the Asia PAC region, a lot of local locations for our team, but ultimately servicing, you know, I think at last count, 32 countries across the Asia PAC space in terms of compliant payroll. Uh, over a thousand clients on our books in the middle there, just a couple of you know, trusted brands in the ANZ and Asia PAC space that trust us uh, for delivering their, their on-time and compliant payroll, whether that's using our payroll technology or payroll managed service or outsourced payroll services. Again, across Australia and New Zealand and extending across the Asia PAC zone. And on the right hand, so just a, a quick recognition of, of the industry reputation that exists uh, behind who we are, behind our payroll technologies and our payroll services. Uh, well understood in terms of awards and, and, and recognition, but also by the independent analyst, uh, analysts. Uh, similarly, well understood uh, uh, and knowing who we are, knowing what our capability is and, and understanding our credibility in the sector. Uh, oops, I thought I did two clicks then, so please bear with me. I'll just go back one step. So the next slide here for me, for, for Ascender and, and, and me in particular, with uh, being a member of the ELT group, you know, payroll, payroll isn't overly sexy, but payroll is about compliance. Payroll is about doing things right and accurately, you know, with quality in mind. But it's also a little bit more for us. It's also a little bit more around adding value. Uh, and in improving the prosperity of your employees. And so a couple of little touch points uh, on, on that topic over and above compliant payroll. On the left-hand side there, uh, we've got an exclusive agreement with EARN. Uh, EARN is a, a provider of same-day pay. If that language or, or, or that, that moniker um, is, is understandable to you, the basic nature of it is being paid you know, for the work you do at the time that you do that work. Uh, and so that agreement and that partnership we've earned and the integration that we've already done with our payroll platforms uh, and, and their platform has really enabled employees within the organisations that we serve to, you know, explore and, and improve their financial wellbeing, uh, which, you know, after the last three to four months, particularly in the Australian, New Zealand context, but clearly across the globe, uh, it has, has an impact on people. And so that financial wellbeing for our own staff using that EARN platform. The feedback has been incredible and something that we one that we think is a wonderful addition to the ecosystem of, of improving the wellbeing of staff and has a logical extension from an integration and, a, and an experience point of view to payroll and human resource capital management uh, in terms of this platform and this webinar. The other one for me is Good to Give. So Good to Give is another partnership that we have for workplace giving. You know, most organisations have got a workplace giving uh, policy and, and practice of some sort, you know, maybe others that don't and arguably should. After, you know, you know fire outbreaks on the east coast of, of Australia and, and floods and droughts and the various outcomes of, of COVID experiences, we've seen time and time again the Australian population and across the globe, you know, being willing to help uh, their neighbours, their colleagues, their workmates in, in terms of donations. And, and our relationship with Good to Give uh, is a really, really important one for us. Effectively, they are a clearinghouse for that ability to donate out of your payroll and get the tax deduction. But really what it leverages is, you know, the idea of one deduction record out of payroll. Uh, Good to Give has, has maintained and sorted out the deductible gift recipient status requirements uh, a lot of technical detail, but you, you you need to you know ensure that who you're donating that fund to has that ATO status so that it's a tax deduction. They do that heavy lifting. Your employees just nominate who they would like to send that money to through a, a single and simple deduction from payroll. And the other one is Q Super, uh, a, a new relationship and a new partnership for uh, Sender, but fundamentally uh, as a as a superannuation fund provider. They're certainly there to provide uh, super fund choice capability for the employees of, of the clients that we provide payroll technology and services for. 
but uniquely what they also provide through our marketplace and our uh, prosperity aspect of improving the, the lives of your employees is the ability to handle the super fund consolidation work that I'm sure many of us on the call uh, and many of your employees are experiencing in terms of having multiple super funds and multiple fees and multiple balances all over the place. These guys, uh, through the, the nature of the agreement and the interaction and the integration work that we've done with them in that context, are able to leverage their capability and take some ownership of helping consolidate super funds for your employees, something that they then don't need to worry about. Uh, in the middle, you know, a, a quick snapshot of the ANZ platforms in particular that Ascender can bring to the table, the Ascender Pay platform, the Proceder platform. Ascender Pay, first of all, your very specific and unique uh, capability focusing in on government, you know, large enterprise and really large enterprise, particularly multinationals and multi-country clients needs, uh, and, and a specialist in the education and university space. So highly configurable, uh, we've enabled RPA, which I'll talk about shortly in our managed service, handles complex payroll. Uh, Ascender Proceder is the other ANZ platform, more targeted to you know, all sectors, uh, but a, a more mid-market um, sort of focus. Uh, payroll is never not complex, but certainly looking towards the, the less complex, more repeatable, more reliable uh, payroll requirements of, of a mid-market organisation. And like a send pay with Proceda, delivered as a payroll technology only, or delivered with managed service or, or outsourced payroll services on top. And lastly, the, the digital community. I, I really like listening to John talk about the Oracle community that exists there. Similarly, in the Ascender uh, uh, ecosystem of all of our payroll platforms, but particularly the ANZ platforms and our ANZ clients, we have a really, really strong user group, hundreds of clients uh, in, in our cattle there, you know, members of that user group meeting face-to-face, on-site, you know, being hosted by our clients, inviting Ascender to speak to various topics of new features and functionality but clients helping clients, frankly. And we do that through that face-to-face -face, and hopefully soon again to be face-to-face, -face, uh, but also through our digital uh, community uh, capabilities through our customer portal, online powered by Salesforce. And last but not least, I know Jason Lowe wouldn't like me to, to, to leave it to the last, but TAPS, the Association for Payroll Specialists, an independently owned entity of the Ascender family. Uh, and, and it's worthwhile stressing that independence. They are uh, a wholly owned entity of, of Ascender that operate with absolute agnostic you know, perspectives on payroll, payroll technology and payroll needs in the marketplace. They are number one for you know, payroll subject matter expertise uh, and you know, proven to be so when we think about the last two or three months that we've just gone through and their help desk you know, you know, phone calls increasing something of 1,300% uh, in terms of trying to explore job keeper and annualise salary and the like. A real quick one across to the next slide, nearly there. Just a couple of key takeaways for me on this slide for, for the attendees listening in. Um, one, I, th I think the first thing to really call out is the, the Ascender Pay platform and the Proceder prep platform for ANZ Payroll. There, it's our proprietary software and, and it's not about banging the drum on that to you know, feel overly you know, proud or impressed by that. But the, the point of it is that this is software that we control. This is software that, that we can determine priorities on, make sure we know whether we're compliant and that that has got a particular focus. You know, when we're not beholden to any, you know, offshore or alternative, you know, headquarter or directional statements on where these products need to go. They are payroll, they are there for payroll, they are specific to payroll and, and we control that destiny. I think the other thing to talk about is it's fit for purpose. You know, we're not trying to be a, a global pay, payroll provider. We're an Asia pack and a regional payroll services and technology provider. We know we do that well. We know we fit in that space and we continue just to be better and better in that space in the years to come. We're already in the cloud. And so for, for many of my clients and maybe clients joining this webinar that maybe are still in a, a legacy on-premise environment, really encouraging to, to continue to explore your pathway and your journey towards the cloud. Uh, we're cloud first for any new business. Uh, that is where we need to be. It's reliable, it's availability, and in the work from home capacity that we're all forced to experience recently, it's always there. We don't need to worry about that server that's sitting in inside the office or in the on-premise context. 
you know, being, you know, kept, keeping the lights open or, or having people remotely trying to dial in, connect in and, and keep, it, keep it up and running. 30 years of payroll technology and experience for me is just about credibility and, and confidence and experience. Um, hugely capable in its ability to integrate both of the platforms and, and particularly putting a lot of focus on that with the Ascender Pay platform, particularly around these relationships that we're exploring right now and partnering with uh, the DXC team and the Oracle HCM platform and WFS. Absolutely looking to you know, really strengthen the, so the idea of a core connector or a certified connector that we have in some areas already and really looking to you know, improve and embolden that capability. And the other one is compliance. Uh, so I'll come to compliance maybe in a little bit more detail on the following slide, but being compliant in payroll, frankly, is the hygiene factor really for existing as a payroll technology and a payroll services partner. Um, and so we, we believe we do that well, and I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in just one more slide to go. And so final slide. These are, I just wanted to talk about four sort of key trends that we're experiencing both in the conversations we have with our clients the conversations we have with new prospects and, and clients looking for new technology and new services. You know, the first one for us is a reminder, frankly, of how we contribute to the overall you know, notion of employee engagement, which has a connotation to employee experience referenced uh, by, by John and the DXC team already on this call. But, you know, employee engagement being, being an, a, a contributor, a very strong contributor to the idea of business performance. So for us, in terms of you know, recognising you know, our, our part to play in making sure that your employees are engaged with your organisation, within your workforce and within the goals that you're setting them. Now, for us, that's about, you know, at the right level, improving all of the user experience interfaces, so the UIs, the employee self-service, the manager self-service, and for the HR and payroll professional, that, that sort of payroll uh, application, that payroll super engine, uh, but for both platforms. Uh, it's really, really improving the, the notion of integration. For us, that's, like I said earlier, making sure all of the HCMs, in particular the Oracle HCM platform, has got you know, a, a rigorous integration now and a continuing to be improved integration and, and strengthening the relationship between both vendors to make sure that that is a, a common goal for both. Uh, but it's also about extending the, the web services layer. And it's really interesting listening to uh, Andrew talk about Oracle Digital Assistant in particular. You know, we will be rolling out a series of enhanced APIs and web services layers without getting too technical on both platforms over the coming calendar year. Uh, and, and with the Ascender Pay platform being a, a, a based on an Oracle technology stack, we're already aware of the Oracle Digital Assistant and its capability of connecting into APIs in our platform and in the Proceda platform. I, I strongly suggest, you know, those that are joining into this webinar to really explore that capability either independently or as part of that Oracle HCM platform, because with Ascender as your payroll partner underneath, we're enabled, we're ready to go with that layer of inter interaction that also, as Andrew talks about, what is my leave balance? I'd like to see my pay slip. I'd like to book leave all through an Oracle digital assistant enabled chatbot, uh, all on a mobile device without really logging into any interface. I think it's it's, it's super exciting and, and, and part of the way of the future. Second one for us is compliance, and, and, and I'll probably say compliance and compliance and then compliance again. You know, for us, everyone has recognised the various wage theft incidents and, and, and the public media uh, perspective and perception of that. Um, we'd all like to, and I'm sure Maureen, or I know Maureen will talk about this in a little bit with WFM with the WFS team and, and their workforce management platform. For us, it's always trying to be one step ahead or at the very least, you know, uh, at that hygiene level on top of all of the requisite requirements for us to maintain our statutory compliance. But it's also taking that one step further in the payroll platforms and automating that. Compliance is different things to different people. Being able to calculate something with an intervention, with a manual activity, with a, a process of entering data is, you know, a, a method of being compliant, but we'd like to, make sure we're always thinking about taking that further and taking that further in its most automated and most logically automated sense within our payroll platforms. So that that data, that inbound data from an Oracle HCM platform, uh, timesheet information from a, a WFM platform or the other ancillary in, you know, inputs into payroll are understood by the payroll platforms in natively 
and in its most automated sense, interpreted and made compliant in terms of the payroll outcomes. Uh, we talked about being cloud-based uh, and, and having and being able to leverage that privacy, that security, the da data leakage protocols that come with you know, the tier one pay, uh, public cloud providers. Uh, that's where we are, that's where we'll continue to be and, and stress to the attendees, you know, please talk about your internally your pathways towards those futures. From an investment point of view in technology, nearly there, uh, we, we've done a lot of work in RPA, so robotic process automation of our payroll platforms, uh, many bots running inside of our managed services centre, and frankly that's to allow our payroll experts in our payroll delivery teams to exercise their, their subject matter expertise and their knowledge. Remove the, the repetitive data entry mundane work, if it's okay to frame it in that way, and allow our payroll representatives and our payroll specialists to be that, to apply that knowledge, to apply that QA into the payroll for our clients who have outsourced you know, that, that transactional work to us. Public cloud investments, which I've talked about, is not only about being in the cloud and, and knowing that that's the place to be for the future, but it is about improving performance, it's about improving reliability, and now being able to also leverage a, an absolute truckload of technical tools and innovative tools that come with being inside of that ecosystem that we're really, uh, are really excited about. And lucky last for us, managed payroll. And so you know, we are extremely mature in our ability to you know, handle outsourced payroll, both in the ANZ space and, and Asia Pacific you know, across the region. We've been doing that for 20 years. It's not a, a new invention to us. It's not something new to us. We feel we do it really well. The net promoter scores that we've just gone through with our existing clients, particularly for managed services clients, has a positive net promoter score across all of our Australian and New Zealand delivery centres. An extraordinary result, something that we're very proud of because we, we put a lot of time and effort into delivering quality and compliant outsourced payroll. But what we have seen absolutely after you know, using the, the, the language of COVID and, and certainly after the last three or four months with teams on site or in-house teams needing to revert to a work from home mode is that that recognition uh, of the reliance on payroll, the reliance on people and payroll technology has certainly created a lot more uh, emphasis and a lot more contact from our clients wishing to explore just what is outsourced payroll, what does it look like, how does it work, help us understand what, what that means for our organisation. So we think that is also something that the ANZ and Asia-Pac region is continuing to become more mature at. We have the ability to handle it onshore in a blended on and offshore or a totally offshore model, uh, something that we would always talk about with our clients in the first instance and find out what resonates well with them. Okay, I'll pause there. I'll try to rattle through that really quickly. Uh, hopefully you followed. And at that point, I'll hand back to you, Andrew. And, uh, and hopefully we've got a bit more time for Q&A if there were any towards the end of the session. There was a question. We'll just keep moving on to Maureen and um, WFS, if that's okay. Right. Maureen, over to you, please. And thank you for attending today. Excited to have you. Thank you very much. Look, good afternoon to everyone on the webinar and thank you to the DXC team and to John and Sandy. Um, Workforce Software are delighted to be co-presenting with our respected partners in HCM payroll and delivery services on the webinar today. Now, a lot has been happening in the workplace with respect to workforce management. Just bear with me. Australia has one of the most complex award systems in the world and Australian companies have been finding it challenging keeping compliant with modern awards. Um, some of the largest employers have been in the news for underpaying their employees. Um, just yesterday, Woolworths has announced its underpayments to thousands of employees has blown out to $390 million. Super Retail Group underpaid employees $32 million, Michael Hill $25 and so on. And really this has resulted in companies reviewing their application of awards, their workforce management processes, and the solutions they have in place or require to fix the issue. Um, after a review in March 2020, new rules became effective for annualised salary arrangements. And employers affected by these changes now need to record the working hours of salaried staff that fall under these um, specific awards and conduct annual pay reconciliations to ensure their employees' annual wage is high enough to cover the award entitlements. Um, in New Zealand, employers have been challenged in maintaining compliance with the Holidays Act. 
um, New Zealand were in the new, uh, New Zealand Post were in the news for underpaying employees 38 million in unpaid holiday pay. McDonald's up to 90 million, District Health Board 650 million, and so on and so forth. Um, MB, the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment, established a task force to review and provide recommendations to improve the Holidays Act. And a new regime is likely to be a minimum of 12 to 18 months away. Um, Christy Hall of Ernst & Young advised that companies are struggling to interpret the Act and professional help was becoming a necessity. She called out that they are managing pieces of software that often don't talk to each other. Often time and attendance software isn't linked to the payroll. And so really there's a real need in, in the workforce to have a fully integrated HCM uh, workforce management and payroll solution, which is you know, why we're here today and why we're having this conversation. So who are we um, and how do we help solve these issues? Well, Workforce Software is a provider of workforce management solutions in the cloud that digitise time and labour processes. Uh, we optimise demand-driven rostering and we simplify absence management and enable strategic insight. We're headquartered in the US. We have um, 3.6 million users spread over 65 countries and a 97% retention rate. We've been operating in the ANZ area for nearly 15 years and we've been um, we have about 70 staff here locally. Our largest office is based in Sydney and we have about 300 customers across Australia and New Zealand. Um, some of our local customers include the likes of Medibank Private, Harvey Norman, Broad Spectrum, EBT, Origin Energy, Rio Tinto, La Trobe University, Kathmandu Opal, you know, customers in a variety of different industries. Um, we have large customers across the globe like Walmart, Walgreens, Metro Group, Ladbrokes, Coral Group and so on. And we have customers in New Zealand like Foodstuffs, the um, biggest grocery distributor, and Red Badge Group for security services. Um, some of the key features of our solutions include um, effective dated future-proof rules engine. We employ a world-class user experience. We utilise artificial intelligence and have a built-in assistant. We provide labour forecasting and roster optimization. We simplify compliance and our solutions scalable for future growth needs. Um, we're a multi-cloud solution hosted on Oracle's cloud infrastructure with a local data center in Sydney. And because Oracle HCM uh, and Workforce Software are co-resident on the same infrastructure, we can achieve the lowest possible application latency between solutions. Um, we have also invested in the OCI platform as a service capabilities, including the digital assistant and analytics. Um, Workforce Software has received recognition as a leader in workforce management amongst the analyst reports. Um, for the last two years in a row, we've been named as the number one solution for workforce management users by Infotech. And key aspects that really differentiate us from other vendors um, that users uh, called out were our configurable rules engine, our user experience, our cloud infrastructure, and our partnership with customers. Um, users highlighted our flexibility and willingness to find the best solution for customers. Now, our solution is comprised of 10 different components. I'll only call out a couple here. Um, time and attendance management, absence management, labour forecasting, rostering. We have multiple options for time capture and so on. Uh, to give you a, a preview of our solution, our solution, the Workforce Suite, it uses mobile first as a design principle. It has a single responsive user interface that looks and functions great on any device. And the Workforce Hub that you can see here on the left-hand side um, allows employees and managers to quickly and easily take action on what's most important. The Workforce Assistant is an AI tool which enables managers to be productive in the moment, um, it brings attention to the highest priority tasks, and it proactively advises, for example, if an employee hasn't shown up for work, that may have an impact on health and safety compliance. Or if an employee hasn't clocked out and is entering overtime, well, that can equate to an unplanned cost for the business, uh, as an example. Uh, rostering allows you to forecast your labour demand to improve business performance and reduce operational costs. So whether you want to view a roster for a single team or 50 sites or stores, it's designed to scale and it uses lazy loading so that you can scroll. Um, as you're scrolling, more shifts will appear up on the screen. Um, it supports legislative requirements, including work hour limits, required rest periods, and so on, and, and it also supports multitask rosters. Uh, many organisations are looking for the ability to move employees from one task or activity through the day, ensuring that each task has appropriate coverage. Um, time and attendance is where work time can be captured, interpreted against a roster to apply penalties such as overtime, weekend rates, allowances, 
um, apply planned and unplanned time off and be approved. Um, also productivity data can be captured to apply any additional pay components. Um, the workforce suite helps um, organisations manage their compliance. We have a highly configurable rule engine which incorporates both a library of localised pay rules and allows for configuration of effective date-driven rules. Uh, we can support the changes to um, the annual annualised salary arrangements. We capture worked hours and entitlement of salaried workers and then can reconcile these either as an annual process or an ad hoc basis. So for example, when an employee leaves the business. Um, we integrate with payroll to support the Holidays Act in New Zealand. So we provide the detail needed for shift-based workers, the history of variable worked hours and future rostered hours, also applying rostering rules to correctly interpret Mondayization of public holidays and so on. Um, and then just to my last slide, because I know we're running out of time and apologies for speaking quickly, but I did want to try and get through this. Um, top of mind for businesses is really how they can return to work and remain responsive to operate in a changing environment due to COVID-19. Um, workforce software can help with this um, by offering, you know, reducing the risk of exposure using pre-shift health screening which protects employees' privacy and either clears them to report to a work site or provides next steps if clearance is denied. Uh, we support contact tracing, so identifying individuals who may have been in contact with a co-worker who has reported exposure or been diagnosed with COVID-19. Um, also notifying employees who have potentially been exposed to an affected colleague with a survey link to determine their risk of exposure, were they in the same department, the same lunch room, um, meeting rooms and so on. Um, we also can suggest next steps based on official guidelines. Um, we can capture employee sentiment. So employee sentiment regarding safety and support at work can have an impact on employee engagement and productivity. The Workforce Suite can survey employees to gauge how employees are feeling about a return to on-site work and address any concerns in advance. Um, and also to understand how employees feel about the safety measures in place during their shift, social distancing, access to personal protection equipment, uh, cleaning and sanitation efforts and so on. Another area that we can help is enabling responsible rostering for a safe work experience. Um, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, organisations have had to change how they deliver products and services, uh, introduce stringent cleaning and sanitation procedures and also adjust their staffing levels. The rostering solution can help you adopt a phased approach to returning to work, whether that be through what-if scenario planning for rostering, staggering the start and end times of shifts to promote social distancing, creating gaps between shifts to limit exposure, offering contactless time collection and so on. And lastly, helping manage an increase in absenteeism. So employee absenteeism and leave events have increased exponentially because of COVID-19, forcing employers to fill gaps in essential roles and stay abreast with rapidly changing leave laws. Um, the workforce suite eases that impact with simplified compliance and streamlined case management for continuous or intermittent leaves of absence, advanced rostering um, techniques to promote knowledge transfer, and easy management of flexible rosters that give employees the freedom to manage personal responsibilities whilst meeting their work obligations. Um, and with that, uh, I will hand back to Andrew um, to, to wrap up in the Thank last you. minute. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. This is Ned here. Um, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I think um, a call for action here. What, what's next is um, Oracle Hitsian Cloud probably doesn't cover the complex uh, uh, workforce uh, rostering and scheduling. And uh, we, we don't have an A and Z compliance pair or hints. We partnered with Ascender and WFS to complement and complete the solution. Uh, based on that, uh, Andrew, if you click next, we, we developed a couple of pathways. So it depends where you are in the, uh, from a footprint point of view and legacy systems and from an organization priority. We can work with you on building uh, the pathway to how you want to transition from where you are today to this complete footprint. Uh, mainly for standard integration points throughout the work we're doing with WFS and Ascender and integrating with Oracle HCM Cloud. If we click to the next slide, uh, it might look like a radar system, but actually these are some of the pathways we develop. Depends on your position today and your plan in the future, so we can 
uh, look at how we can improve uh, the current legacy systems and move from on-prem to software as a service and probably manage services if that's the most suitable option for you. Um, from here, uh, I think a call for action. If we go, Andrew, to, to the next uh, slide, uh, probably a couple of slides more. Uh, let us know. We, we can do a complimentary health check to understand where you are, give you this assessment, go through that customer journey and, uh, and, and map it to where you are and what are your plans. And um, having only a minute or maybe not, um, uh, if there is, is there a chance then to answer any questions or we're out of time? So a couple of questions we haven't been able to answer, so specifically Meredith and a couple of others. So apologies for that, we're out of time, I want to respect that um, cut off. So we'll follow up with those via an email or a call, but thank you everyone for your attendance. Um, just following on from this, you'll get an email with a link to the recording if you want to share it with your colleagues and obviously more further details on the, um, the health check uh, offer that we've got in front of you now. So thank you everyone for attending. There was a, a large number of people on the call all the way through that. Um, sorry, it was a bit time um, pressed. Uh, we certainly appreciate your attendance and thank you once again to our partners from WFS, uh, Ascender and um, of course Oracle. So thank you and enjoy the rest of your day and everyone be safe. Thanks everyone. Thanks, David.